Dr. Smith, physical therapist here, and I wanted to make this video today to educate slash inform everybody with what's going on in regards to COVID-19 and home health. Now, when I talk about home health, I'm talking about Medicare Part A, not Medicare Part B, and not Medicaid, because that would just take too much time. So I'm gonna preface this by saying there's a whole lot going on in regards to Medicare Part A and COVID-19. We're gonna start with LUPAs. So what's a LUPA? Well, a LUPA is a low utilization payment adjustment. This means that Medicare gives you some money for some services, and if you don't provide enough services that meet a certain threshold, you have to give that money back. I'll give you two examples. So our first example, we have a patient who recently had a stroke, COPD exacerbation, and diabetes. And we have five visits for RNs, five visits for PT, five visits for OT, five visits for speech. Now, each provider only sees this patient one time, you're most likely going to encounter a lupa due to underutilization and have to pay that money back. That being said, you can also have single discipline lupas. For an example, you have a knee replacement patient that has PT only for eight visits. PT only sees the patient for two visits, you're most likely going to have a lupa and have to pay that money back. Now, to learn more about lupas, you can go to the CMS website, look up certain diagnoses, and see how many visits you need to avoid a lupa. And again, it can be single discipline or all disciplines. Again, go to the CMS website to learn more about that. Now, the point of explaining that is to understand why lupus have increased with COVID-19. So there's a multitude of reasons. We're going to start with the best reason, which is best infection control practices. Many agencies, unfortunately, I can't say all agencies, but many agencies decided to only see patients for essential visits, such as wound care. So that means non-essential nursing, non-essential therapy, non-essential speech, what have you, wasn't being done. Or sometimes agencies don't have enough PPE for each provider. Or patients call and say, hey, I'm high risk. Don't see me. Stay out of my house. You know, patients have rights too. So we have a multitude of reasons. Those are only three reasons on why lupus are happening. Now, what does this mean for agencies? Well, the bigger agencies can most likely stay afloat due to them being publicly traded. However, smaller agencies might crash and burn during this as we saw with PDGM. Because with PDGM or pre-PDGM in the older PPS model, we saw that the more therapy you provided, the more reimbursement you got. But under PDGM, the more evidence-based outcomes you get, the higher reimbursement you get. So it's kind of changing the whole landscape, but right now it's creating a huge problem because when you can't see your patients, how are you gonna have good outcomes? So this is creating not only a looper problem, but a PDGM outcome problem because when your payment's based on outcomes, but you can't see your patients due to a pandemic and you're also having an increase in lupus, you're just hemorrhaging, hemorrhaging cash. Now, what did CMS do? Well, CMS decided to add a COP. If you ever see legal documentation with COPs, it means conditions of participation. So their COP that they added was an emergency payment. So I'll go into that here in a second. So yes, CMS releases allocation details, conditions of participation, again, COPs and legal documents for emergency payments to home health providers. So they decided to do this around April 10th. Then what happened? Well, they realized that they are now hemorrhaging cash because they're funding everyone else that's hemorrhaging cash. So a few days later, or I don't know, 20 days later, they decided to suspend the advanced payment program. So we see why they did this. However, it wasn't just that reason. At the same time, the Department of Health and Human Services also put out a act or a bill or the CARES Act. Under the CARES Act, HHS is given like $20 billion to $50 billion to home health agencies. And because they're doing that, CMS is like, well, we love saving money. That's why we implemented the PDGM. So if you guys are going to cover this, we're just not going to do that. So you guys can take what you want with that. This is just information I'm providing. And again, all of this information you can find at homehealthcarenews.com. I may post the links below. I may not. Depends how lazy I am when I upload this later. But we can see that it's just kind of craziness going on. And these agencies are just hemorrhaging cash. But it's really not anyone's fault. And unfortunately, patients are getting worse care. And we saw with PDGM, patients actually got worse outcomes due to you're seeing diagnoses, you know, with like four PT visits that usually needed eight before. Again, though, I will say that I understand why CMS implemented PDGM. It was because of many organizations just fraudulently billing therapy, providers fraudulently billing, and nobody really 
stepping up and doing anything about it and CMS wanted their money back. And now we can see when CMS is hemorrhaging cash and they see that HHS is gonna step in, they're like, nah, we're gonna save our money, which makes sense with the amount of seniors we have, the amount they're probably paying out for COVID, they're probably trying to save as much money as possible. Uh, next thing I wanted to say, I already have that here. And basically, I like this title, just basically it's kind of what's going on. Basically, it's just pouring gasoline on, on, on everything, kind of exploiting problems. Because as I said, not only are you having the lupas, you're also now having a problem with outcomes. On top of that, CMS did not allow for telehealth visits for a while. And um, part A was a little bit different. I know they just allowed part B date back to March, like, I don't know, a few days ago. But they've kind of been slow to all of this. And again, I believe it's because they know they're paying out a lot, especially when you look at like, what they're paying per uh, COVID patient. So they're trying to save as much money as possible right now. And I'm gonna go into the CARES Act. So with the CARES Act, we can see that you can get 20 to $50 billion worth of funding. Will this be enough money? We don't know. What's gonna happen? Honestly, I don't know. I think the best thing moving forward is to start doing data tracking. You know, if you're an agency, use some sort of outcome tracker, data tracker, implement telehealth practices, especially now that CMS is paying for it, if you can do most of your visits via telehealth, especially in times of a pandemic, and get good outcomes with data tracking, that's gonna be what saves you because you're gonna save CMS money, especially if CMS is your primary source of funding. There's other funding topics we can talk about another time, but my advice going forward is if you're a clinician, start having other sources of revenue. If you don't already, you can you know sit here and make YouTube videos like I do. You can have a course, you, you can do, do whatever, but if you're a clinician, and you're working in home health or you were working in home health or whatever setting and you're kind of furloughed right now not doing anything you know start doing your own telehealth setup you can see patients for cash now you can see medicare patients so make sure you get that set up and if you're an agency honestly contact hhs get that funding hopefully at the same time you're able to get maybe an eidl loan or something like that smaller agencies are going to suffer once again i do believe that with pdgm and what's going on here is that they kind of do want smaller agencies to suffer. So that way it's just easier for them to pay like, you know, four to five bigger agencies that get, or I guess, acquire the smaller agencies. Hopefully that made sense. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe to the channel if you liked it. And uh, hopefully you like this new setup. I have my mic, my spit guard. Actually, it's not a spit guard. It's a condenser, but I guess if you want to spit on your mic, it would block it. And these headphones, hopefully the audio quality was good. Again, I'm Dr. Smith, physical therapist. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and uh, thank you for watching. All right, guys.